Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. In the last video you saw me attempt to repair some unfortunate shipping damage on my Goodwill Mac Pro and overall I would say it came out acceptable. Actually I'm just hoping that like with a lot of life's problems this can be covered up with a few layers of paint hiding the ugly truth underneath. I mentioned in a previous video that there's plenty of documented ATX conversions on this case. Well, actually more of them seem to be Power Mac G5s, which are surprisingly different when it comes to the small details. But the one thing I noticed was that everyone does their conversion differently. There's no one way that's more preferred over others. One company makes a conversion plate that you can bolt onto the back of the case after cutting it up. And while this looks nice, it's also like a hundred bucks. So that was out of the question. I decided to go to the cheap route and hack up a back panel out of a donor case, which I will get into in just a minute. Before I got going too deep, I wanted to just place some dummy components into the case to get an idea of how the motherboard would sit, and if the power supply cables would reach. To my surprise, it looks like I might just be able to make it with only an extension to the 8-pin motherboard connector. The front panel connectors are also going to pose a bit of a problem. Apple, of course, used this proprietary board that connected to the main logic board with a SATA cable, which was kind of weird. I'm going to just make the USB ports work, leaving the firewire and audio ports there for looks. I also plan on wiring up the power button to a harness that I'll salvage from a spare case. One of the more tricky parts about the build is making a back panel that works with an ATX board. I mentioned before about the off the shelf panel I can get, but that was out of the question. I saw some guys online using a panel they removed from a standard case, so I looked around for a case to steal one from and ended up taking it from some old e-machines I found buried in my backyard. No clue how it got there. I just had to drill out a couple of rivets and it came right out. I placed this using my favorite method of measuring, eyeballing it. I basically lined it up with the top of the Mac's PCI slot and went from there. Once I was happy, I marked out where to cut it. This panel obviously covers the fan a little bit, but I think I have a plan for that and I'll deal with it once I get there. All right, time to hack this case up. This is the point of no return. Nothing like using the Dremel at midnight, trying not to wake up the wife and kid. Overall, it wasn't too bad, other than going through a bunch of cutting wheels, but surprisingly, the panel fit great with no extra cutting needed. Now, it's definitely not perfect, but one, it's once it's painted, it'll be less noticeable, and two, it's on the back of the case, so I don't have to look at it very often. Now it's time to get the motherboard mounted. This wasn't actually too hard. You just had to break off the standoffs in the Mac Pro, screw them into the ATX board, apply some JB Weld, put it into place, and wait for it to dry. After 24 hours, these were good to go and this case is officially ATX. To permanently attach the rear panel, I decided to use some of this JB Weld putty to fill in the gaps along with the screws to go along the outside of it. This stuff was pretty easy to work with other than making a huge mess on your hands from kneading it together. It also dries super fast so you have to work quick. Once it was dry, it was rock hard. The next issue to tackle was where to put the power supply. I wanted it in the stock location for that clean look and that meant some modifications were necessary. This divider you see here to the left was originally there to hold the fan for the Mac power supply as well as a pass through for the power connectors, which are proprietary of course. I thought this would be a simple job to remove it as there's a bunch of screws holding it in so I thought it would come out with no issues once removed. I then realized there was multiple rivets holding it in, two of them being hidden up in the top part of the case. Needless to say, this took me quite a bit to get it removed and the case took some damage. Removing this was necessary though to get my power supply in there as there would be no way to route the cables with it in the way. Now that I have an idea of how all my components will be placed, I wanted to tackle one of the most difficult parts of this build, the case window. I know this won't be a popular decision, but I wanted to do a little something to this case to make it stand out and I figured hacking a giant hole into the side panel was just the thing to spice it up. I pulled this window from an old case I had lying around hoping that the thick black bezel would give me some wiggle room for when I ruined the case with my jigsaw.
I measured this a few times to cut into it, passing the point of no return. I'm sure you don't want to watch 10 minutes of my back as I cut this, so you just have to believe me that I did indeed cut it out. So jumping forward, here it is cut out with the holes drilled for the window insert. Yeah, I know it looks pretty bad, but hang in there, it will get better. Looking back, I should have drilled the holes first to give a guide to how far I could cut, and maybe I wouldn't have had to enlarge the hole so much to get some adjustment. But as you can see, with some careful adjustment, I think it's going to turn out okay. Now it's time to paint this to get an idea of how the whole case will turn out. When looking at the store, this paint immediately jumped out at me, and I knew this was the color to go with. I'm painting the door first as a bit of a test before I go all out and paint the rest of the case. I can see how well it will apply and if I like the color. Here is the panel painted. It came out way better than I expected, honestly. This paint is really nice to spray and really forgiving. It also seems to dry super fast and I was able to handle this within just a couple of hours. It went on nice and uniform and the color is exactly what I was hoping for. And here it is with the case window. See, I told you it would look okay in the end. The black bezel really saved this thing from having to go into the trash can. And now it's time to test fit. I'm loving the color and it kind of looks neat contrasting with the silver of the case, don't you think? Here's a quick view of the board mounted with the case window. I think it looks pretty cool and I do plan on reusing many of the Mac Pro interior pieces as possible for that clean stock appearance. With this newfound confidence of painting the side panel, I was ready to clean up the case and shoot some more paint. I bought two more cans of the same Rust-Oleum paint and with the leftover from the first, I was able to get a few coats applied. And here it is after painting. It came out really nice. On the front here, I had just taped off the button and it turned out better than expected. On the side, this looks really good. You can still see a faint hint of the Apple logo, but otherwise it covered up everything really well. On the back, I ended up not removing the handle and just taping it off since I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to remove it. But I think it came out pretty nice like this and I like the contrast. The shoelaces you see are actually how I was able to paint the entire case. I didn't want to set it down on a table and have to paint it in two parts, risking messing up part of it while turning it around. So I hung it with these laces. I put a large washer on the side of the case passed a bolt through and tied the laces to that and was able to paint it on all sides while it was hanging. I had taped up the inside to stop the paint from coming into the interior through the cheese grater holes. This worked out pretty well since I didn't need to be precise or anything as long as it stopped the paint from getting in. And here it is with the side panel. I'm very happy with this color choice and how well this paint was applied. I hope I put enough coats to be somewhat durable but time will tell I guess. I decided not to paint the drive bay covers to have a nice contrast on the front of the case and I think this will look pretty good once it's all put together. So I'm almost ready to start assembling this case. I just have a few more things to do before I dive into that. Overall it's coming out way better than I thought. I fully expected to have ruined this case already by now but surprisingly it's really coming along. Let me know what you think of the color and how the case window came out. We'll get this thing finished up in the next video for sure. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment on this about what you like or don't like about my direction and what you may have done differently. And give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And until next time, see you then.